I found the puppet in the FNAF movie. No, it's not this viral image of two wide eyes on the stage in front of Chica. It's actually a far more creepy and well hidden easter egg. Before we get to that, all of the easter eggs in this video are taken from a script I'm working on about every single easter egg in the FNAF movie. This video is a compilation of the biggest and most interesting easter eggs that I've found so far and that I haven't seen anyone talk about yet. So if you like this video, look out for that in the next week or so. Now, most of you clicked on this video to see the puppet and I don't blame you. This is huge. Some of you know that we got the soundtrack to the movie early via a leak and to my excitement, the puppet Puppet's song was on the track list. That being said, I went into the theaters expecting to see the puppet and didn't. Since then, people have claimed that this image shows the puppet, which is possible, but I don't find this evidence to be damning. From what I can see, its proportions are off and its silhouette reminds me more of a staff bot than the puppet. By the way, on the wall of drawings in the restaurant, you can see a present in one of the pictures, a subtle hint to the puppet. Anyways, in making my every easter egg video, I've been scrubbing through every frame of the movie, looking for any detail that even resembles a reference, and I'm sure glad I did. I found a bunch of huge huge secrets that I haven't seen anybody talk about, and a lot of them are really interesting. I was recently scrubbing through the Freddy security training footage, convinced that there was something hidden in the static images that corrupt the screen in the second half of the video. I screenshotted several frames that looked interesting and brought them into my photo editor to try to find something hidden within them. Out of all of the TV static, I found two frames that show something I haven't seen anyone talk about. In the top right corner is something that looks absolutely identical to the puppet in FNAF 2's end of night cutscenes. When this image caught my eye, I literally jumped out of my seat because of how creepy it is. I got so excited to find this easter egg and it only made me wonder how far Scott and the team have gone to include references like this. Considering how hidden this is, I'm excited to see what other secrets fans will uncover in the distant future. I believe that there could be some easter eggs in this film that take months to find. Here's something else I bet you didn't notice. There are several A's hidden around this wall of pictures. Here's one in the crayon strokes of Spring Bonnie's chest, a few in the shadows of thumbtacks, two that make up the swing in this picture, one in the stars, and a bunch of them in the balloon boy picture. Okay, Maybe you did notice that last one. Could these A's be referring to the surname Afton? In Security Breach, another character named Vanessa who shares a lot of similarities to Vanessa Shelley has the last initial of A. In that game, Vanessa A's father is known as Bill A, with Bill being a nickname for William and A coincidentally being the first letter in the name Afton, many people theorize that Vanessa A is William Afton's daughter. One of the big reveals in this movie is that Vanessa Shelley is William's daughter. Could all of these A's on the wall of drawings be an early hint that Vanessa A from the games is more like Vanessa a Shelly than we thought. In this scene, Mike goes to an ice cream store in the mall where he works and orders an ice cream. Did you notice this? The server who greets Mike asks him if he wants his regular, to which he confirms. The interesting part comes when we see what Mike's regular is. It's chocolate vanilla swirl. I believe this is referencing a popular FNAF theory, Golden Duo, which suggests that the animatronic Golden Freddy is possessed by two souls, Cassidy, a blonde, and the crying child, a brunette. The chocolate vanilla swirl could be in reference to how the two souls possess Golden Freddy collaboratively. In the movie's lore, I think Garrett would likely be the replacement for the crying child, being Mike's brother and another victim of William. Furthermore, we don't find out if Garrett is possessing an animatronic, but if he is, I think it's most likely that he shares the suit with Cassidy, seeing as Cassidy is the one who talks to Mike about Garrett. This could be Cassidy overpowering Garrett, using his memories to manipulate Mike. Furthermore, in the games, it's theorized that Golden Freddy is possessed by Mike Smith's brother, and with him writing It's Me on the mirror in the movie, it makes sense that Garrett is sending a message to Mike. Now, did you notice the comparisons of Abby to the crying child? First, I'm not saying that Abby is the movie's version of the crying child. I think that would be Garrett, if anyone. But in my research, I found that the movie uses the characters to reference details from the games, but that doesn't mean that they are that character. Some characters exhibit the traits of multiple characters from the games, but I will get into that in my video on every FNAF movie easter egg. With that being said, in the scene where Mike desperately tries to get Abby to eat her dinner, he threatens her saying that kids who don't eat their dinners never grow up and never get to ride adult rides. Now, I tried to find a reference in that threat, but so far, I couldn't find anything that wasn't a stretch. The interesting part, however, comes when Abby responds saying, my friend says you're an idiot, referring to her stuffed animal. Now we know that the crying child also refers to his plushes as his friends, which Abby does throughout the movie, but we can take this a step further when we consider what the plush says to her. Her stuffed animal says that Mike is an idiot, which is eerily similar to the crying child's plush that would tell him that his brother Michael hated him. Also, here's one of the only details on the list that I noticed in theaters. In the scene when Mike brings Abby into the restaurant and tells her to go to sleep, she sleeps in a fort built around a table. In other words, she lies down on under a table in the restaurant, something the crying child is shown to do in the fourth game. Here's another interesting connection to characters from the games. In this scene, Aunt Jane refers to Abby as mentally ill because all she does is draw pictures and talk to her imaginary friends. Interestingly, in the first FNAF game, Phone Guy tells us about an incident in 1987 in which someone lost their frontal lobe but remained alive. Now, 
been born yet in 1987, given that the movie takes place in the year 2000, but the frontal lobe is the part of the brain responsible for expressive language, which Abby seems to lack. This doesn't mean that Abby was the victim of the bite of 87, and I don't believe that she was, but I do think the movie is making a reference to the games, where there is mention of a person who lives without their frontal lobe. Now we all saw the machine I'm calling the pins and needles contraption because pins and needles, but did you notice this gear? On this gear, there's a very intriguing design. It looks like a face. Now this face doesn't look identical to any animatronic in the FNAF lore, but in trying to be hidden, I think that the crew was trying to make it look like simple wear on the old parts. Interestingly, the animatronic this face most closely resembles is Ennard, the conglomeration of all the Funtime animatronics, except for Funtime Chica. This isn't just a random reference though. This pins and needles device also shares a lot of characteristics to the scooper from Sister Location. Coincidentally, the scooper is the device that salvaged the Funtime animatronics for the parts used to build Ennard. Most people know about the theory that Mike Smith, the security guard in the movie, is really Mike Lafton in disguise. In Sister Location, Michael ends up in the scooper and doesn't escape, like Mike does when he ends up in the chair. Furthermore, this contraption doesn't have a canon name yet. There is a fan name going around that I probably shouldn't say on YouTube, but without a set name, it's still possible that this is the movie's version of the scooper. Another interesting detail that I only learned after watching behind the scenes footage is that the mask used in the device is green. I've seen people say that this is Shadow Freddy's mask, which I also thought for a while. And I also have another possible theory that I'll share in my every Easter egg video, but given this information, I think another candidate is more likely, Fredbear. Based on what we know from FNAF 3, when one of the yellow Springlock suits sits around for decades, its yellow color fades to green. Since we know this happened to the Spring Bonnie suit in the games, it's entirely possible that it could happen to Fredbear. Also notice how the mechanical structure of its ear doesn't match that of Golden Freddy or the Endo from the security training footage. Although this mask has clearly been fitted with blades and some kind of aperture shutters, the fact that the ears don't match that of the other bear masks makes me think that this is a different kind of animatronic, perhaps a Springlock, or at least an older model. Now, as far as I know, this would be the only mention of Fredbear in the movie, aside from these possible references, so it begs the question, does Fredbear exist in the movie's timeline? And furthermore, does Henry Emily? Kim only refers to one owner in the training tape, someone who loves family-friendly fun and cutting-edge animatronic technology. This seems to be referencing Henry Emily, but William Afton also seems to imply that he's the owner. If Henry Emily is actually the sole owner of Fazbear Entertainment, it would bring a whole new meaning to the line, just can't bring himself to let it go yet. This could mean Henry is trying to undo what William had done, keeping the restaurant around so that he can one day find a way to free the animatronics. Given the puppet's appearance, Henry could be motivated by his daughter's death, as he is in the games. In this case of Henry being the sole owner, that would make William at most an employee. We see him in the Spring Bonnie suit with Vanessa back in the 80s, so we know that he was at least an employee. But is it possible that even to this day, he's nothing more? I want to say that William is the owner, but the fact is, there's evidence to support either one of them being the one founder of Fazbear Entertainment. I will go over this in greater detail in my next video. So did you know any of these easter eggs? What do you make of them? Do you think the puppet easter egg means anything or is it just a reference? Feel free to start conversations in the comments and we can all share theories. Thanks for watching.